Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. And today I wanted to talk about something that I've been thinking about is, is it worth lifting your Jeep? And before we get started on that topic, I just want to let you guys know that I opened up my online store, nodjaroffroad.com. So check it out, link will be in the description. Now, the reason I was thinking is like, should you actually even lift your Jeep? Is because there's so much time and money that I've been putting into this. And it's, and I've been doing it in such a quick time that it's like, I don't know, it's a lot. It's a lot for sure. So if you're gonna lift your Jeep, you're gonna for sure need a track bar in the front and you're probably gonna need some either long arms or adjustable control arms because you need to push the axle forward or backwards. Like on this one, you see how it's so tight up there. So I need to push it back a little bit. You're going to need control arms aside from the springs and shocks. So there you are spending, I don't know, like 1200 to 2000 for control arms for long arms. I mean, you can spend $700 for adjustable control arms, but then you're limited to how it rides. Like it's not comfortable. With the long arms, it actually feels pretty decent. And then aside from that, you also have to think about, are you going to install this yourself or are you gonna have someone install it for you? If you're gonna have someone install it for you, that's where it gets really expensive. People charge an arm and a leg for labor, which makes sense. You know, you're taking it to a shop, someone who's gonna do it professionally, but that's another expense that you have to think of. And is that really worth it to you? You could just add a budget boost and do it, you know, pretty cheap, but then you're not gonna get the full amount of lift or flex that you're gonna want off-roading. I mean, it would work. But if you want to lift it to actually get flex, to actually be able to go up crazy obstacles, you're going to want to lift a little bit more and that's where it gets expensive. Next are the wheels. You're gonna spend a ton of money on tires and the wheels, it just depends if you go with something fancy or something like Steely's. But the tires themselves, those are pretty expensive as well. And the worst part about the Jeep is that it's never really done. You're always gonna be constantly buying parts. You're always gonna be constantly trying to upgrade things and it's a slippery slope. Like you will get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Not really trouble, but a lot of debt for sure. It adds up very quickly on the Jeep WJ. Compared to other models, there's like a lot of products out. So it's a little bit cheaper to find parts compared to WJ and WJ is really expensive. And that's why I've been contemplating this video because I've been buying more and more parts and it's, I love it. I mean, I personally love it, but should you do it? I don't know. That's up to you to decide. One thing I do recommend though is you can buy used parts for sure, but don't buy parts that you're gonna end up replacing a couple months later. Like how I did it. I went to the junkyard, I bought a grill, and then I bought a grill like the next month. So that was like not worth it. And same with the headlights. I bought the headlights with the O-rings, the circles, but then I ended up changing out for these a couple months later. So just be aware of what you want and then save up money and buy what you want. Don't just buy stuff because it's cheap if you're gonna change it out a month later, you know? And what I recommend is you do a lot of research on either Facebook groups, YouTube, or Google, just to see what's the best. From the stuff that I've seen a lot is, you're better off building your own lift kit. Don't just buy a lift kit. If you get the brand that nobody likes, RC, you're gonna have issues with it. It's the control arms on the RC lift, they actually rub on the wheels. So with the iron rock, they actually bent in, so they don't rub there. And then the joints on those and the shocks on the RC, they go bad quick. So you're better off just piecing it together, get the shocks you want, get the springs you want, get the control arms you want, the wheels you want, and then the steering system that you want as well. So yeah, I just wanted this video to be like a reality check. I just wanted to let you guys know what I've been thinking of with my Jeep lately since I've been, I'm happy with it, I love it. And I've been putting a lot of money into it and I don't know, it's, it's just a thought. Like I've been putting a lot of money into it and honestly in stock form, they perform pretty well compared to other cars, so you don't absolutely need to lift it, but if you want to, just be aware that it's not just gonna be that one part. You're gonna wanna add more and more and more parts and make sure you have a bank account just for the Jeep. And the next video, I'll be fixing the struts and some other stuff, so yeah, be on the lookout. Anyways, that was all I wanted to say, so I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.